we're in a series on financial health, and um, we've, this is the fifth week, this is the final week of financial health, so hopefully you found it beneficial and uh, informative, and uh, that you're able to kind of put some of these into practice. We've talked about the foundation of, the, the, of financial health, and uh, we've talked about the importance of uh, uh, anything else, uh, uh, a primary aspect of, that really is the basis for all the things that I've mentioned is being content. Uh, contentment is something that is, uh, is kind of crucial to everything that we do. We talked about sowing and reaping and the importance of what we sow, because whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. Uh, like it or not, um, you know, that is what's going to, to happen. You can't sow one thing and expect to reap something uh, something else. And, uh, and so this week I want us to, uh, to look at, um, well, well we looked at last week at the habits, didn't we, of financial health, some of the uh, great habits to have and some practical help. This week I want us to look at actually what God in his word wants us to invest in. He actually tells us very clearly throughout the Bible where God wants us to put our money. The, 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 the primary areas um, of investment for us with our finances. And, um, and sometimes people think, oh, the church talks a lot about money. Well, that's for simply because God talks a lot about money. Uh, he understands that it is essential to us. And, um, and uh, as Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart is. So he understood the importance of where our money goes and how we view our money how we use our money, and whether we actually um, use it or misuse uh, it. And so, of course, Jesus has a lot to say <clears throat> about banking. He has a lot to say about, uh, about our accounts. And, uh, and so today, I want us to talk about uh, our treasure, and, uh, and that God wants us to actually to put our treasure into a number of different pots, uh, through the time. Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus was speaking in Matthew chapter 6, says this, Do not store up for yourselves treasures in earth, on earth, where moth and rust destroy, or where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moth and rust do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. In other words, here Jesus is saying very clearly that we can store a treasure, we can store our wealth in heaven. Now, I don't know if you're like me, you go, yes, but how? YBH, yes, but how? How can I invest my treasure in heaven? How can I ensure that I'm not just having what I have here, but I can actually uh, have wealth in heaven? heaven. And so that's what this week is all about, is about how can we make some deposits into our heavenly account so that we, are, we have something for all eternity. Yes, because what you have now, however wealthy you might be or however little you have, it is only for this life. What really matters is beyond the grave, is when you go to meet the Lord, is what are you going to have when you can do that. And so we are going to enjoy forever whatever we invest in heaven. So what you invest in heaven is what you will enjoy in heaven forever. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes? And so I want to say to you, we often understand the things that we can't take it with us. You've heard that phrase, can't you? You can't take your, your, your wealth with you, you can't take your money with you, you can't take any assets with you, you can't take your house or your car, whatever it is, you can't take them with them. However, you can send it on ahead. You can send on your wealth and treasures ahead, and I'm going to talk about that this week. And so just to illustrate it very simply is when you and I go on holiday, particularly if you're going to go by, uh, by plane, when you go, you pack yourself a suitcase. You put in the suitcase all the things that you will want at your destination. 
Wherever you are going in the world, you might fly from Manchester Airport or Newcastle or, if you're really with it, Leeds uh, Airport. Um, uh, I only thought that because we passed there yesterday. But, but um, you, were, you would pack it and then you would go to the airport and then you give it to, to one of the stewards, whatever, you, you know, when you go to the baggage handling department and, uh, and you show your passport, you show your ticket, and then they take your uh, suitcase off you and it disappears. And you don't see it again until you get to your destination. Well, you hope you see it to your destination. There have been times when it has gone missing in transit, of course. Um, but So all I'm saying to you is, is that the only way that you can have your treasure in heaven is by packing it into God's chest so that it will go ahead. And so that when you get to the, your destination, which is heaven, you will have whatever you have sent on ahead with you. So you can't take it with you, but you can send it on ahead. In other words, it travels on in the invisible realm, in the eternal realm, something that you have got to take by faith. So if you don't believe in eternity, if today you don't believe in life after death, then this isn't for you. So you have to believe that there is more to life than this life. Or this doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't wash. It doesn't make sense. Yes? So only for you that believe that, uh, that Jesus died for you, that Jesus came so that, he, so that he gave his life so that you could have life, so that you could have eternal life. So he who has the Son has eternal life. And he who doesn't have the Son does not have life. So in other words, the only way you can do that, you've got to be a believer. And it's not just a, with a head knowledge, you've got to believe it with your heart, you've got to act on it. Amen? So that's what we've got to, 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 to realize more than anything else. 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul writing says this, Tell those who are rich... And I think I've already said that's all of us here, yes. So in other words, if you've got some change in your pocket or at home, you've got a, a, you know, you don't have to have much. I'm telling you, you are in the top 5% of the world's richest people. If you've got something in your fridge at home, you're even in, even in a higher percentage, yes. And so he's talking to us, yes. We can't get out of this. So even the poorest of the poorest of us are rich in comparison to the majority of people in the world. Yes? So he says this, Tell those who are rich, again, that's us, not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone, but their pride and trust should be in the living God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. And then it says, tell them to use their money to do good. So I'm telling you to use your money to do good. And that's the, that's, that's the instruction there. So money is a tool. It is to be used. It's not something just to be stored away. It's not something just to be enamored or, or sought after, or loved, it is simply a tool, yes? You're like, it's a, a tool in your, in your kit, in your, uh, you know, so when you go to the garage and you're looking for a tool, well, money is one of those tools, yes, uh, that we can use. And so every time we use our money for good, we are investing in heaven. That's what we're doing, yes? So we don't waste our money, we use it for good, and hence are investing it in heaven. It carries on in Timothy. It says, they should be rich in good works. Yes, good works is good doing good things. Yes, use your money to do good. Yes, and should give happily to those in need, always ready to share with others whatever God has given them. By doing this, in other words, using your money for, for good, it says, by doing this, they will be storing up real treasure for themselves in heaven. It is the only 
It's not just one of, it is the only safe investment for eternity. And they will be living a fruitful Christian life down here as well. So today I want to talk about God's investment funds. I want to talk about the accounts that God wants us to make deposits in while we have the opportunity. Because once we go to be with him, we will not have further opportunities to invest in these funds, in these accounts, yes, into these chests, as it were, heavenly chests of treasure up there. And so God has five investments accounts that he wants us to do. They are proven and they are protected. So there's no greater protection, yes, because often uh, when you look at the financial markets, people want to put, if they want a safe thing, they put it into bonds. Uh, you know, they, they do various things because the bonds are more secure than, than many of the other financial markets that are, that are going on. So this is proven, it's proven, and it's protected way beyond any earthly account. And so the first account, the first chest, as it were, that God wants us to put, uh, to send on ahead, as it were, to put in our suitcase ready to go into that chest, is he wants us to go put money into the development fund. He wants us to put it into the development account so that we can invest in eternity by using our money to develop our character, to develop who we are, to develop our skills, to develop our abilities. Proverbs 10 says this, the earnings of the godly enhance their lives, but evil people squander their money on sin. In other words, wise people, godly people, invest their money in themselves to build their character, to, to become better so that they can... Uh, they can use their money to get their lives to be better. Fools just blow their money away. They waste it on all sorts of silly things. So God wants us to use the money that he's given us, uh, a percentage of our money uh, to give us, to grow intellectually, to grow personally, to grow in our skills and become mature in Christ. Now, we like to spend money on things that are comfortable, don't we? We like to buy a comfortable chair and a comfortable car and comfortable clothes or whatever. We're looking for, for comfort. But God wants us to invest our money in our character, in developing our character. Luke 2.52 says this, Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with both God and man. In other words, he developed intellectually, he developed emotionally, he developed physically, and he developed spiritually in his relationship with God. And so when we invest in ourselves, so for example, some of the things are, for example, you buy yourself a Bible, you are investing in yourself. Or when you buy a Christian book that's going to help you in some aspect of that. Or when you attend, guys, an Excel conference, you are investing in yourself. You're developing your character. And so it's important that we understand that. When we pay for a seminar, so for example, this coming week, when we have Daniel and Elena Skuse with us, that when, when we attend those kind of things and put our money into that, we are investing in the development fund, God's development fund, and it's starting to put something in there so that we've got something when we be with them. So when we've had John Andrews and we've had Glenn Balfour and, and we've had Justine Caswell, um, you know, they, they're all people that as we, uh, we've had, we have them, it, it, you know, it costs us as a church to have them. Quite, quite, quite a lot of money. So all I'm saying is, is that when you give into that, you're giving into the investment of yourself, yes? And so it's important to do that. So, for example, if you pay for a taxi to get to Connect Group, you are investing in yourself. That, that, that's how plain it is, yes? So, if, in other words, if you pay for a babysitter so that you can go to Connect Group, you are investing in yourself. You're investing in this development fund, and God honors it, and God likes it when we do that, yes? When we purchase commentaries or devotionals, or oh, a big one for, for some people who are, are, are so called, they so desire to get close to God, they, they, they give everything and go to Bible college. In other words, they're willing 
to give up their job. They're willing to give up what finances they have in order to be able to develop themselves for what they believe God's calling them to. And even if they don't think God's calling them to anything specific, many go and they just want to develop themselves. They want to to get back the years that the locust has eaten, the things where they have misused their time and their money and they're saying, God, I want to get close to you. I just want to be able to develop myself. They go to Bible college. Yes? So in other words, some people invest at that level and I think that's a level that I, I hope today that maybe that there's somebody here that says, that's for me that I'm willing to invest that kind of level and say, it's all for God. It's all for him. Kath did it. I've done it. Faith's done it. Nadine's done it. Do you know what I'm trying to say? We give. Now, what I'm saying is at great cost. Everything we had was given in order to be able to, to do that. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So that's what God wants us to do, to develop that. And so when we Give what we've got in order to gain an education, in order to grow in our character, then God honors that. Amen? Proverbs 23 and verse 23 says, Invest in truth and wisdom, discipline and good sense, and don't part with them. The message translation puts it this way. Buy wisdom. Buy education. Buy insight. Proverbs 16, 16 says, It is better, much better, to have wisdom and knowledge than gold and silver. Now, some of you have invested heavily in your education. Yes? You've, you've educated all, all sorts of different kind of things. For many of you, you've kind of come to this country, and it's cost you a lot to invest in yourself, to invest in your career, because you're believing in the, in the family either that you have or that you're praying that you'll have. You're investing in your future to develop some skills and some abilities, and God likes that. But he especially likes it when you are doing it because you want to further his kingdom. So in other words, let me just brag about someone this morning, yes? Um, for, for example, NK. Now, he'll probably be very embarrassed now. Um, but, but what I'm saying is, is that NK come at great cost. He's doing his master's in, in some artificial stuff. <laughs> I made that sound bad, didn't I? Um, but, but all I'm saying is, is that, that he's using his skills. Now, all I'm saying is developing himself... But there's a guy that uses his many talents and he's in the youth ministry and he's leading there with faith. He's in the, he's in the, um, uh, that was in the PA department and, uh, and, and comes there. So every Wednesday night, every Thursday night, uh, a solid member in his connect group. Do you, do you know what I'm trying to say? He helps us in the office. He's been helping us with web. He's been helping us with computers and updates and you name it, uh, the, the TVs that you see, he's got them up and running and, uh, and all the software and hardware for it. What I'm saying is, is there, you look at NK and you might not see much, but God sees him investing in the chest of God's heaven. And that's what I'm saying. Now, I just named one, but there are many like that. So I'm only just picking on him because he deserves it, you know. <laughs> But, but all I'm saying is that's what God is into. Developing himself in order to be able to better himself and grow his character in what he wants uh, to do. So we can feed on junk food or we can feed on spiritual food, on good food, on healthy food. The choice is ours. Isaiah 55 is a great, a great chapter and it says this in verse 2. Why spend money... And what is not bread? And your labor and what does not satisfy? Listen. Listen to me. And eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest of fare. This bread is a metaphor for spiritual sustenance. About feeding our souls. Yes, our souls need to be fed. And we need to invest our money in our souls in things that will nourish them. And I like the book by Bear Grylls that actually says soul fuel. And it's a devotional that he's done. And uh, you may want to, particularly for the guys, uh, get a devotional like that. Just in putting, you're investing in yourself. Yes? When you buy something and use it in your devotions. And so let me ask you, 
Are you building your life on junk food or nourishment and spiritual food and things that will do you good, things that are truth? You see, money is a bit like fertilizer. When it is piled up, it starts to stink. But when it is spread around, things start to grow. And that's what happens with our money, is if we just pile it up, it just starts to stink, and we start to get, put our trust in it and start to kind of think about it and worry about it and get concerned about it. But actually, when we spread it out and we give it away, I want to say to you, it actually has the ability and will, God says, bring growth. It will bring produce, it will bring fruitfulness. Isn't that fantastic? I think it's absolutely amazing. So let's invest in ourselves, amen? And uh, so third, secondly, God's next fund, next, God's next chest that he wants you to invest in is God's community account. He wants you to invest in this. So when you invest in eternity by using your money to encourage fellowship in the house, fellowship in your connect group, fellowship among believers, you are investing in heaven. Isn't that fantastic? I think so. So whenever we use our money to encourage fellowship, God says, that's good, and I'm putting it in your heavenly bank account. Yes, it's in the suitcase, and it's on its way every time you do that. Romans 12 and verse 10 says, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. Share with the Lord, share with the, the Lord's people the practical stuff of life, things that we have Share with those in need. Romans 12 and verse 13 says this, Share what you have with God's people who are in need. Show hospitality. And Hebrews 10 says this, Think of ways to encourage one another with outbursts of love and good deeds. I think we need to be creative in this area. But we need to be um, uh, intentional in this area to be able to use our money to encourage fellowship, to encourage a bonding Together, I thought about calling it the bond fund <laughs> because it bonds us together and it, it goes on. Not a James Bond fund, okay, but, but, uh, but, a, but an investment into our fellowship, into, into, our, into God's community. And so it's important that. So every time you open your home up for your connect group, you're investing into the eternal chest. Every time you serve coffees and teas uh, for, for, for people, every time that you're, you're serving in church and you're just helping people or you're in your connect group and you, you, you buy somebody a Bible or you give them a book or you help them with some financial need or whatever it might be that you do, you're investing in the people of God, in the community, and you're building together. So in other words, for some people, um, they paid for others to go to Excel. They were investing in the community fund. So they are going to have some bonus points in the heavenly chest. Isn't that fantastic? So if they say that after this service or any service and you see somebody that's new and you have a conversation with them and you make them feel welcome and you say, well, let's go for a coffee. You're investing, whatever that coffee costs, whatever that meal is, you say, come on for a meal. Whatever that is that your investment is, if it's the heating at home or the lighting, whatever it might be, I want to say to you, it is not wasted. It is seen by God. And so God says it's actually, it's waiting for you at the other side. Isn't that fantastic? I think so. You just write a card to somebody, buy a gift. Uh, whatever it is, Destiny 252, get involved in that and, and encourage others um, by being involved. Yes. Now, three reasons why um, that we should do that, and they're found in 2 Corinthians 9, and it says, this service of giving, yeah, giving is a ministry. It is a ministry, and I think we need to understand that. This service of giving not only helps the needs of God's people, it also brings many more thanks to God and it is a proof of your faith. Many people will praise God because you obey the good news of Christ, the gospel you say you believe, and because you freely share with them. So the first thing it does is it proves that you're in the family of God. 
Yes, when you're investing in the family of God, it shows that you're in the family of God, that you want to be part of the, part of the family of God, that you love the family of God, you love God's people, and you're generous with God's people. Secondly, it creates unity amongst us when we share with one another. It draws us closer together. It knits us together when we invest in the commun- God's community fund. And uh, uh, Psalm 133 says, How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. I tell you what, unity is such a precious thing. It is so wonderful to have unity. Unity uh, is peaceful. Unity is pleasurable. Uh, unity just enables you to, 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 um, to experience the joy, don't you, of that uh, when there's disunity, there's tension and there's friction and there's, you, you, it causes you stress, it causes all sorts of things. And so thirdly, it is a witness to unbelievers when we help each other and we show love to each other as believers. They take notice, it says. 3 John uh, uh, says this, when you extend hospitality to Christian brothers and sisters, even when they are strangers, you make the faith visible. yes. So the ministry of hospitality, yes, inviting guests after the service to your home or to Weatherspoons or whatever it might be, is investing in eternity. Isn't that fantastic? I think it is anyway. And thirdly, God wants us to invest in his distribution account. He wants us to be in God's ministry account. You can invest in eternity by using your money to serve other people, yes? Ecclesiastes 11 says this, be generous, invest in acts of charity. Charity yields high returns. Don't hoard your goods, spread them around. Be a blessing to others. This could be your last night. We don't think about that, do we? We think we've got forever. But it's a warning to us, isn't it? And it's an encouragement to us to not to be hoarders. And on that, in terms of service others, I want J.E. to come and just to give a little testimony right now of God's goodness to him and how he's applied this principle out this yesterday. Is it on? Okay. <laughs> I can clearly hear my voice now. Thank you, Pastor. It was, it was, I mean, like the, the EXO was really, really good. I mean, it started with, with this concept of giving my faith, of giving tithes, and like faithfully giving tithes. I mean, like back in the Philippines, I was really giving my tithes really well. But when we started living here, I was bargaining with God, like, I cannot give my tithes fully because we're just starting. I still have to find a house. I still have, like, I'm still the only one working. So, I mean, like, we, we, we still like somehow financially, financially constrained to do that. But God was speaking to me through, through Pastor, Pastor Jonathan's message that I have to give my tithes fully regardless of my circumstances. I was, I was like um, bargaining with the service I have. Like I am always available for the church. I am always available to honor my pastors, to honor my leaders. But God is strictly saying to me, you have to give your tithes. So this month I gave my tithes. And you know what happened? We got so many problems after that. <laughs> it was the other way around. I was like, God, I have just given you my tithes fully and intentionally. And after that, I've been, I've been getting messages from my family, from our families back home, that they need this, that they need that. And I was like, oh God, this money I've been preparing for, for a deposit in, in our house that will be moving in by December. So, but since... Our family is needed badly. We have given that without hesitation. And my wife doesn't know it. Because I'm like, I mean, like, without hesitation, I'm like, we have given that. Because just to relieve our pressure. So, so that happened. And this Excel, so that, that moment, this Excel happened. And I, don't, I am not sure if I can come because I cannot pay that much. I mean, like, I cannot pay now the Excel. But Kuya Dev, as gracious as he is, I'm like, he said, I would go over you. He said, so that was the plan. He said, he, want, he wanted me to come. So I came to that Excel and 
you wouldn't believe me. God was insisting me to pay for the Excel on my own money. Because oh, during, during the first night, God was talking to me. You have gaining so much on this, on this conference, yet you haven't paid the price. So I shrug it off. <laughs> Is it God or maybe it was just my thinking? Maybe I was just guilty. But the other day, but the next day, it was this message about Joshua 6. When God instructed Joshua about how they would bring, how, how would they destroy the Jericho's wall. He said, he declared on John, Joshua 6, there was this contrast that this pastor has mentioned. He said that this Jericho's wall is tightly shut, that no one could get in and out. But I have given that to you already. He mentioned that this is tightly shut, but I have given that to you already. That means that God have given me that blessing already. But there's this wall. And he said, this wall is your payment for this Excel. During that time, I sent it immediately. And I said, God, could I just send half? Because I don't think I could manage our finances after this. Because we're going to be on the edge of my finances. No, you have to pay fully the price. Lord, I just have given my tithes. No, you have to pay fully the price. So I was... I have given hul. And Lord, God was telling me, how could I manage your finances if you would give something that you still can manage? If you still can manage that, I wouldn't be that one who, who manages your finances. If you want me to manage your finances, you have to give something that would hurt you, that would allow me to rescue you from that. So I've given that. And I was crying because it hurt me so much. And when we're, and it was like 12.18, I knew it exactly, it was 12.18. And then we, we that, that session got, got off at 12.30, so that we will be having our lunch. And Kuya Dev saw me somewhere around, I was crying, I was scrolling my phone, because I received a message. Remember it was 12.18, at 12.19 someone sent me, but I read, I read it at around 12.30, and Kuya Dev saw me crying, and he asked why. I saw him I let him saw the message that was the landlady sent me. She saw she she sent me a she sent me a video of the house that was refurbished. The first blessing was this. She said, "I have um that the house is now furnished." She said, "The only thing that lacking is your the only thing that lacking is bed and wardrobe." I was like, "Oh God, that's the only thing we have." <laughs> and you know what the second one is? And I know that you are just starting yet. I have said this before, that you need deposit and advance payment. But now you just have to pay the rent. You don't need any deposit. <laughs> if that wasn't God, I wouldn't know who it is. But God made that possible. And God made me remember the story in the Bible where, we, where the widow, where, Eli, where God instructed Elijah to go to Zerapah, where the widow is. So, but the widow was picking up the sticks so that they could prepare their last meal because that moment, they decided to die the next day. They would be having that last meal and they would be dying the next day. But that was also the moment God decided to bless them. So that when you're on the edge of your situation, you just have to give it all to God. Because as the pastor said, you wouldn't know what's in the next What's, what's, what's on that part after your giving? So I was challenging God, and he didn't fail me yet. That was so good. That was fantastic, wasn't it? Yes, that's the reality. So I wanted him to share, because obviously it's read off, off the press. Um, but it is something that he, he is, when he was doing that, he was using his money to bless Christians in another country back home that had gone under uh, massive issues of flooding and all sorts of things. Uh, so he put their needs before his, knowing that the money that he used and that he needed for a deposit, and yet God came through. And that's what I'm trying to say to you, is God will always come through. He is the God of miracles. So let us do our giving while we're living. Amen. Um, and we, like I said, we don't know when our days are going to be, uh, to be numbered. So let's, let's know that, that we actually need to do that. Fourthly, um, is we need to put 
uh, money into God's, I've called it, emerging market account. <laughs> uh, God's global account, yes? In other words, God's the mission account, yes? Uh, investing into, into others. In other words, it is the emerging market because it is investing in people who are not yet Christians but will be Christians or have the potential to be Christians. I mean, what, that's, that's great investment, isn't it, to invest in those things. So in other words, when we tell people about Jesus, when we bring people to Jesus, when we uh, help churches abroad to be able to bring people to Jesus, we are putting into the heavenly coffers. We are putting into the heavenly chest, into God's account, that's ready, and it's for you. It's not just to go to heaven, it is for you. Yes, so it's your account, it's going in your account when it goes in, because you are the one that has and given. Luke 16 verse 9 says this, use worldly wealth to gain friends for yourselves so that when it is gone, you will be welcomed into eternal dwellings. I, I think that's fascinating to think that when we give into missions, when we give into uh, bringing people to Jesus, into whether that's buying a Bible for them, or whether that's um, you know, investing in some ministry that's, that's, that's reaching people for Christ, whatever that might be, um, I think what is, is fascinating is to think that when we get to heaven, they are going to welcome us. So the people that have got in, so they're going to, you know, we're going to be able to say, it's because of you that I'm in heaven. It's because of what you gave that I'm in the, in the kingdom of God. I think there's nothing greater than that, is it, to think that we'll do that. I wonder, for, for some even at Excel, some of the guys were investing and sponsoring a child in Compassion. I know many of you do that. We, are, we support, I don't know how many, 25, 30 children in, in Compassion. So what I'm saying is for every one of you that are investing in Compassion to, into a child's life, you are investing into God's uh, emerging market fund, into God's global fund, into God's mission fund, because you are seeing lives change, and not just that child's life, but that family's life, and it's affecting the community. And the churches out there are able to, to minister because of what we give them to work with. Isn't that fantastic? So maybe your shoebox, next week, shoebox, last week for shoeboxes. When you, when you put your money into a shoebox, or two, or three, or whatever it might be, then you are investing in your heavenly account. In other words, it's not just, oh, I'm, I'm just doing good and I'm just blessing them, that actually when you are doing good and you are doing it for the mission fund, which is what it is, because then the, when the compassion go and they work with the local churches, they give the gospel into every one of them and they're working with the children and, uh, and, and makes a difference. And, and as you know, we have had people who have received shoeboxes in the church. And they've been able to testify what made difference that has made. 2 Corinthians 9 says this, You honor God through this genuine act of service in your commitment to spread the good news of Christ through your generosity in sharing. And fifthly, God's priority account, God's honor account, God's um, glory account, God's honor account, I called it there. Uh, in other words, when we are giving into into to worship God, to adore God, to glorify God, to magnify God, to honor him in what we do, then it goes and into our heavenly bank account. And so when we need to use our money to honor and worship God. And so Proverbs 3, and I've talked about this last week, uh, so I don't want to spend long on it, but I just want to say to you, it is an account that you're investing into, yes? And that is when you bring your tithes. Proverbs 3, honor the Lord by giving him the first part of all your income and he will fill your barns and overflow your barrels. Yes, this is what happens when you give your tithe and you give your first 10%. It is a first fruits to God. It is an honoring God. It is saying, God, you're first in my life. You're first in every aspect. So when you're giving your money, it represents your life. It represents absolutely everything. So if you're giving above the tithe, that's an offering. And God says we need to bring tithes and offerings. Amen? And so it's important that we understand that. And when we give to that, 
I want to say to you, it pleases God. He is pleased when he sees us giving and honoring him. And as I said earlier, Matthew 6 is, wherever your treasure is, there your heart will also be, because your heart follows your money. It follows your assets. Wherever you have, wherever God's given you, wherever, you, uh, 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 wherever you're spending your money, um, or using or investing your money, that is what is precious to you. Amen? So I've, what I've found is, in life, there are two things that if I feel that I'm drifting away from God, I don't feel close to God, I've found that there are two things. How many? Two things, yes, that I do, that if I do, will really draw me back close to God. And the first one is to share my faith with somebody. I find when I share my faith with somebody, I feel closer to God because I have shared about God to others. And the second one is to give an offering, to give to God, because that's where my heart then follows where my money's gone. And, it, and, it, and, and God is looking for them. So if you're not feeling close to God, I say to you, try it. Try those two things. Um, it will make a big difference. Job 22 says this, give up your lust for money. The Almighty himself will be your treasure. There's no greater treasure, is there, than having God in your life. Amen? I'll finish with this. Imagine. That at the end of 2022, that the government decided to stop using the British pound and move over to the, let's say, the euro. Yes? And on the 31st of December, that is going to be the big day. That is going to be the day of conversion to the new currency. That, uh, that, that everything that you have, if you don't convert it by then, um, it's useless. What would you do with all the money that you have if you know that, that by December the 31st, that every money that you have, that if it's in pounds and it's not converted to euros, it's gone? What would you do? Not a trick question. You would convert them to euros, wouldn't you? Yes? <clears throat> So the only thing you would do is you would save enough pounds to get you to conversion day, wouldn't you? You'd say, I just need enough to get to there, but everything else I'm exchanging. And I want to tell you, that is what is happened with heaven. There is coming a great conversion day. There is coming a day when what you have now, the earthly, will be converted to the heavenly. The, all the things that we have in the earth will be gone. They will be useless. They'll, they don't benefit you any longer. But everything that you have converted from that bank account, from this world's bank account, you've used your money for the kingdom of God, it will be, it will be changed into God's currency. And it will be put into God's chest that he has for you. So it's up to you. I remember hearing a story of a guy who died and went to heaven. And, uh, and when he got to heaven, some of his friends showed him around heaven. And as they were going, he says, we'll show you where your, your place is to live. And as they were going, they pointed out their houses. They were mansions. They were gorgeous. But when they got him, and this is where you are, they pointed to him to a little shack. Two rooms. Yeah, that's all it had, this little shack. And he says to him, well, that's, that's not fair. How come you've got a much? How come I've, this is all I've got? And they said to him, because that's the only materials that you sent ahead for us to use. Let me ask you, what will you have in eternity? What does God have to invest in eternity for you? What for all eternity are you going to look at and think, if only? For all eternity, that's what's going to matter is what you have done. Have you used your money for good? Have you invested into God's accounts? And the, I, I've said the five accounts that God is looking for you to invest into. And the development account. Will you, will you spend that? Will you invest your money in yourself? to develop yourself? Will you invest money in the community account so that the, the, the house of God and the people of God can flourish, yes? And in that, you are sending wealth on ahead. 
Or is it in the ministry uh, account where you're serving others and you're blessing others and you're sending your money to, to those in need and giving to them? Or is it to the global account? Are you giving into these accounts? Because as you give, you will be blessed. That's what God's deal is for financial health. His financial economy is very different to ours. And we have to go according to his plan, not according to ours. Let's pray. Father, we're away, so away, that, Lord, that we often lose our focus. But today, Lord, we pray that you would help us to use our money in the accounts that, Lord, that really matter for all eternity. Today, Lord, we pray you would help us, every single one of us, Lord, to use our money to develop ourselves, to develop our character, to become more like you in the things that we purchase, in the things that we use our money for, Lord, that we would, we want to become like you. Help us, Lord, to invest in that. We pray, Lord, you'd help us to invest in the community of believers and to we pray, Lord, that you would help us to use our money to help others in need in our fellowship. For those that love you, help us, Lord, to just to bless them. We pray, Lord, for those that come into here. We pray, whether it's today or in 10 years' time, we pray, Lord Jesus, that at any point, that, Lord, that we would always see that what we give is an investment not only into that person, not only has it uh, validity and now we thank you Lord that you are giving us treasure in heaven Lord we thank you that it's like a double whammy we get double blessing we get a blessing now for new friendships and we get a blessing of friends in heaven because the Lord of our investment help us Lord to use our money wisely I pray Lord that you would help every one of us today the Lord to put you first to honour you with our tithes and to honor you, Lord, with our offerings and to give you our very best. We thank you, Lord, that you gave your very best, that you didn't short changes, you didn't go half measures, that you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us so that we might know freedom, that we might know what it is to have your grace to no longer feel guilty and shame, but to know your love and to know your care and to know your purpose and to know your hope and to know that you are with us. I pray this in Jesus' loving name. Amen.